Hey guys, today we are going to assess the question of how did Jeremy on Sleeve Media go from the largest magic YouTube channel who was just opening boxes to the enemy of Wizards of the Coast. Recently, Jeremy was punched multiple times from a WPN store owner. I, it's still unknown why he punched Jeremy, but probably it's based on his opinions from research that has been done. He is in a lot of trouble. Uh, this guy, his name is Matt, he's in a lot of trouble right now. Criminal charges, five witnesses, lots of property damage. It's likely that he will go to jail. Now, why would someone risk this? Why would someone who, ha I think he has a wife, Matt, why would he risk assaulting an individual who he has never talked to or met before at a large, at this case, Gen Con? Imagine how much uh, hatred and how much dislike and disdain for someone you must have to attack them in front of witnesses in a very public setting. It's pretty crazy. Um, it is very, very crazy. Now, information came out that he owned a local game store in New Haven, Connecticut. He had a booth. This is a Magic the Gathering player. Uh, this is someone who may have built a Magic the Gathering community. Would you be comfortable letting your children or even you, an adult, going to a place where the sto store owner has a history of beating people up that whose political beliefs are different from his? There's so much going on. The root of how Jeremy Chains can kind of be attributed to a private Facebook group. Uh, the private Facebook group had different YouTubers at the time. I was part of it. And as was Tolarian. Tolarian, I can tell you, was the first one to leave. And then he started a second private Facebook group with him, Wedge, and a few other people. This group had Rogue Deck Builder. It had some MTG finance channels, some smaller channels that no longer produce content. It was a it was a who's who of magic YouTubing at that time. This was before the big Patreon dollars. This was when all Tolaran Community College was pushing was the monthly magic boxes, which of course was not sponsored. It's just free product, right? Tolarian, right, Brian? And people added their real Facebooks accounts. So Brian, it didn't make a fake Tolarian account. He used his real Facebook account. And we all introduced each other as who we were. Uh, same with Wedge. He didn't create a mana source. No, it was just him, Anthony. Now, at this time, it was a lot of, con oh, let's... The whole point of this group was we could collaborate. That we would collaborate with each other. And you would be on my channel. I would be on your channel. We would be able to produce better content for everyone. And then everyone could gain more subscribers. Well, not everyone wanted to do that. Uh, Tolarian, again, was the first to leave. For all his uh, statements about community, he wanted to be the biggest YouTuber. And he took Wedge with him. Uh, so those two left for their own private Facebook group. And decisions that Wedge made applied to both of them. As you can hear from Darium, who now does Pokemon video, Wedge is speaking for Brian, which is Tolarian, and saying, Hey, Darium, I know that we're good friends, but Brian is not going to sponsor or not going to promote your product anymore. And Darium is taken aback. He's like, what, what do you mean? Like, have you talked to him? And then he's like, yep, I'm making that decision for him. Now, 
That was the point that Tolarian and Wedge decided they need a villain. Every great magic story, according to Mero, needs a Mike Long. For every John Finkel, you need a Mike Long or a Mark Justice. Otherwise, the story is not compelling. That's the same way with Tolarian. Tolarian doesn't get to where he is without making unsleeved media, without being juxtaposed to him. Wedge doesn't get... So when you look at Wedge and Tolarian, one of them still lives at home. Wedge still lives at home. He doesn't have... I don't think he's ever worked a job before. He has severe IBS, which he has stated many times. He has mental depression, and now he has medical bills and uh, back problems. He has... I'll be very blunt. He has... Uh, he should go to the gym. I've offered him a gym membership. I have not heard anything back from him. I really don't think he's going to accept it at this point in time. And Tolarian. Uh, he was... Pretty much a failed, I, I have a difficulty calling him a professor because he wasn't full-time, he was teaching at community college, and he's had such a disdain. I've never seen someone with such a disdain for their kids. I, I did study sessions where I wasn't paid for in a huge room of 400, 500 people. I did all this great stuff for my students because I wanted the best for them. That's what a teacher is. It's not someone who asks their students for donations all the time. So, yeah, it's someone who quit their job. And he, when his basement flooded, it's not like he got insurance for this. So this insurance issue is actually much bigger. I remember seeing a stream where someone donated 10000 or $12,000 to him to fix his basement, which was flooded because he didn't carry insurance. Well, a few months ago, this exact scenario happened again. Wedge didn't carry health insurance, so he, the bill was paid by the, quote, community. Now, you juxtapose that to Unsleeved Media. He has a business. He has a job. I know what business he is in. He's in the same business I am in. Um, pretty much, I would say. I don't know exactly, but I know he does marketing. And he has money. He spends money on the game. He spends money on magic product. He spends money going to GP events. Now that he, he can't go now, but he used to. He went to pre-releases, midnight pre-releases, local game stores. Imagine all that. And yeah. Then you have Wedge. Walmart this, Walmart this, Walmart that. No local game store, always talking smack on local game stores, never grew up with a local game store. And yet, Wedge is the complete opposite of Unsleeved Media. Right? And that's why Unsleeved Media became the villain, because he had to in the storyline. Wizard of the Coast had to make him the villain. To promote Tolarian Community College, they needed a villain. To promote the Manor Source, they needed a villain. So the easiest way for me to put this is Tolarian posted some random video on Reddit. Boom. First page, first rank on Reddit. First hit on Reddit, on MTG Reddit. Unsleeved Media gets beat up at Gen Con. Nowhere to be found on Reddit. The Mana Source needs surgery. First page on Reddit. All right, not even first page, first hit on Reddit. Unsleeve media finds some sexual predators in the judge program, not a word. Everyone's banned. And there you go. You have your villain and you have your hero. Now, I would argue the hero is very irresponsible and it's not something that you want to mimic. Now, you might ask, here, let's get to the heart of it. Why would Matt Wizard of Coast possibly want someone who doesn't have a job, lives in the parents' basement, no job prospects in sight, no real ability to make income after magic, and is 100% reliant on donations. That's their magic pros. They don't pay their magic pros enough. This lifestyle, the whole pro tour, is based on the concept that you can win this a lot, of this money. But so many people try for it. They give up everything. They sacrifice their jobs. They sacrifice their wives. They sacrifice their children, time with their children to go for this professional, 
if you want to read an interesting article, read Todd Anderson's article from many times ago where he quit his job and his wife was so baffled. His wife was supporting them while this dude wouldn't deliver pizzas because he was too good to deliver pizzas. He was a magic pro. If you destroy this illusion of magic pros, if you destroy this illusion of writing articles can make you money, MTG Finance can make you money, you lose the pro tour. You lose the dream of being a full-time magic creator. Therefore, you have to hate on people with real jobs. You have to hate on them. Although they are your player base, and they're supporting the game. If people were logical, not a single person would want to be a Magic Pro given how volatile the salary is. There's no, there's not even a salary. It's prize, right? It's prizes. Yes, you can write some articles, but how much are you getting paid to write an article? And yes, you can create a YouTube channel. And yes, you can ask for donations. That's not going to last. And I would love to be here when the whole bridge goes down and collapses because I think it's coming. Anyway, bye guys.